Borlands are one of the most sought after species of ant, however, they are quite a challenge to care for, as they are very aggressive and are quite complicated to raise from just a single queen. Borlands should only be kept by expert ant keepers. I would advise having at least a year of experience before caring for this genus. Today, we'll share all the information you'll need to raise almost any species of Borland. You have acquired a Mimesia queen. How do you care for a founding queen? Mimesia queens are easily stressed compared to other types of ants, and should be checked up on as little as possible. Bull ants are semi-claustral, and should be housed in a tubs and tubes setup. This setup involves placing a tube inside of a container, or cutting a hole into the side of a container and having the tube in there. During this time, you should place a sugar source, such as honey or sugar water, in the outworld allowing your queen to feed. After a couple of days, or a few months, depending on the species, your queen should have laid her first batch of eggs. This point in development is the time you want to check on the queen the least, as that when the queens get stressed, they have a tendency to eat their own eggs. If all goes well, the eggs should hatch into larvae in one to two months. Bullant larvae are fully carnivorous and strictly feed on solid proteins although they seem to prefer crickets, cockroaches and earwigs. When feeding protein, always use the size of the larvae and queen as a reference. Don't feed an entire cricket to a queen that only has tiny larvae. And don't put a live 40mm cricket to a queen that's only 15mm. For small larvae, use a simple cricket or roach leg, or for larger species, you can use a small cricket. How often should you feed them when they have larvae? As a general rule, if the larvae aren't munching on something, they should be, as the more often they are fed, the quicker they will grow, and the lower the chances of the larvae eating each other. The larvae have been voraciously feeding, and are now big enough to spin their cocoons. To help aid the larvae in this process, provide substrate. The queens will help place sand around the larvae. This works as a scaffold for their cocoons. Some species require more coarse substrate than others. This can be achieved by mixing stuff like sand and cocoa peat, as it gives them a bit more structure than sand does alone. The first workers will be small and spend most of their time in the nest, while the queen continues to forage for them. The queen will teach these new workers how to forage. If they venture too far from the nest, she will sometimes pick them up and carry them back. They will be very shy and opt to run instead of attack. As more workers arrive, the colony will become braver and more aggressive. After around 20 workers, the colony will start to grow quite quickly, and to cater for this, you should give them a large outworld. This will allow them to have a larger foraging area, causing less workers to actively try and escape. It will also make feeding easier for you, as lifting up the lid will be less problematic. That is our Mimesia care guide. You are now equipped with all the basic information you need to keep almost any species of bullant. We hope you have found this video useful. If so, please leave a like. And if you have any other questions, facts or corrections, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.